a couple weeks ago, me as well as a lot of my friends got our uh, ballots in the mail and we read our pamphlets on every single one of the propositions. We came across Proposition 34 and like a lot of you, the only thing we knew about it was the morality of it. Either we thought it was wrong or we thought it was right. And uh, like most of you guys, uh, you guys don't know any of the facts on Proposition 34. Many of you guys believe that Proposition 34, uh, that the death penalty actually costs less than uh, sending someone to life in prison. But unlike that, it actually costs a lot more to send someone to death row than to uh, keep someone left in prison. Since 1964, we've killed, uh, we've executed 13 people, and within those 13 people, it has cost us Four million dollars. Uh, the average cost of uh, one execution is about 308 million. That's for one, and as of right now, we have about 714 people on death row. So you guys need to know this because you guys, uh, many of you guys don't know the facts, and so you guys are, uh, you guys uh, need to know what you guys are voting on and what you guys. Uh, is happening what your tax dollars are going towards. Firstly, in this speech, I will talk to you guys about the cost of keeping someone on death row and keeping someone life in prison. Secondly, I will talk to you guys about uh, the actual composition. And thirdly, uh, the, um, the morality and is it uh, justice for the victim's family. So firstly, on average, it costs about $308 million per person to be executed. $184 million of that goes towards the trial. It can vary depending on how many years the trial actually lasts and the whole process of it. Uh, while you're being processed and everything, uh, if state law that uh, someone being put on death row cannot be kept in the same institution as someone who is not on death row. So people on death row have their own institution and are usually uh, have their own room and everything. In this $184 million, uh, they're being given health care and uh, their own room, their own security because they're uh, seen as more of a threat to be with other people. And so a lot of these conditions people think are not fair simply because they committed a crime that was so horrible to be sent to death penalty and they shouldn't be rewarded by giving them health care and things like that. Uh, an uh, article actually came out on San Francisco Times saying that a man who killed four men uh, while in his trial actually pleaded to be sent to death row simply because he knew that he would be receiving better treatment than the people who were, in, uh, who were being sentenced to life in prison. Um, when you're sentenced to life in prison, it costs the state about $105 million per uh, person. So it is Compared to the $308 million, it actually costs a lot less to send someone to life imprisonment than uh, to sending someone to death. Um, if you guys voted on Proposition 34, you guys will know that it, if you voted yes, it is about, it is uh, to abolish the uh, death penalty and to sentence everyone to life imprisonment. Therefore, if you are on trial right now, or you've been trying to plead your case that you were uh, not guilty, you would be automatically sent to life in prison and without parole. So you wouldn't be able to plead your case, you wouldn't be able to uh, plead that you were actually not guilty. And also included in this proposition, from, those, uh, from all that money that we were sent to death penalty, a hundred million of those uh, dollars in funds will be given to would be have been given to uh, the police task force to solve uh, unsolved cases such as murders and uh, rapes and stuff like that that have not that don't have sufficient funds to be solved. And if you voted uh, no on Proposition 34, then you're voting for uh, the death penalty to still be in law. So when you go to trial you would either be sentenced to life in prison or to uh, death. And so, uh, and with this, with voting no, no funds would be given to the police force so that these uh, crimes, unsolved crimes can be, uh, 
therefore solved. Um, lastly, I want to talk to you guys about is it actually justice for the victim's family to uh, send a uh, convicted person to uh, life in prison? I want to talk to you guys about uh, Polly Class, which you guys heard a little bit earlier. She was a 12 year old girl who was in her room. She was having a slumber party with her friends, and a man decided to come into her room, tie up her friends, and put pillowcases over their heads so that no one would be able to hear them, and took Polly Class that night. Uh, after her friends went tied, the police came to the scene. Immediately the day after, a search was uh, formed. Three days later, Polly Class was found dead and raped. Um, Richard Davis was convicted of uh, this crime and he was sentenced to death. Later on, um, Polly's father came out saying that he felt that this was um, right, that he felt his daughter was being. Uh, that it was, uh, his daughter is being, uh, yeah, that it was a case for his daughter. Um, but that case was 16 years ago, and still to this day, Richard Davis is alive and is in jail, and has not been prosecuted. And in a recent interview by CBS uh, News, Paula's father came out saying that it is not fair to his daughter, that justice has not been served for his daughter, and that the process is really slow, and many people don't know that the process can actually take 13 to 25 years to actually put this person uh, and give them either the lethal injection or whatever it is for that state. And so in this uh, speech, I have talked to you guys about the cost of Proposition 34 and uh, also what you guys voted for, and as well, uh, <coughs> the justice of the family and uh, is it actually justice for them. And so now you guys know a little bit more other than the morality whether you guys think it's right or wrong.